Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Let's get into it. Pose, season two, episode six. Let's get started. All right, you guys. So the scene starts off with Pray Tell and everybody in the ballroom scene. Everyone's having a good time. The theme for tonight's ballroom is futuristic. Everybody's serving, everybody's showing their looks that are future-esque. And Pray Tell is saying, yes, what are your scores? 10, 10, 10. Everybody's drinking, everybody's having a good time. You see Blanca, you see all of the children, all of the mothers serving and just having a really, really good time. So as Pray Tell continues to host, you notice that he's a bit hot, he's sweating, he looks a little flushed, you know? So you're thinking, oh, it's a packed house, it's okay, he's just a little hot. But then he starts to look around and it kind of seems like everybody else is okay and he's flushed and he's drinking his drink and you just, as the viewer, you're just like, oh, here we go. What's, what's, pray tell, pray tell, what's going on? You all right, boo? He just continues to go on and serve and serve and then all of a sudden he starts to get dizzy and he faints, you know, and of course the whole ballroom just flocks to him and nobody knows what's going on. Follows us into the next scene where you have Blanca and Nurse Judy. They're at the hospital with Pray Tell, and Pray Tell is in bad shape. Follows us into the next scene where you have Blanca and Nurse Judy. They're at the hospital with Pray Tell. Nurse Judy, she recognizes that he has bruising and looks very flushed. And we have another doctor in the room that says, hey, when was the last time you took a good, good poo? You know, Pray Tell says, hey, I'm super constipated, and it's all because of that medicine. It's all because of that medicine. So he's upset because, you know, pray tell in other episodes, he talked about this. He talked about how he didn't want the symptoms that everybody else had while taking the medicine to help with his diagnosis with HIV. So he was really upset about that. You could see his anger immediately. Blanca and Judy, they tell him, hey, don't worry about it. Just get well. We'll make sure that we take care of the AIDS benefit. So, you know, Blanca and Nurse Judy, you know, they tell him, don't worry, you just get well. You just get your rest. We'll make sure to take care of the AIDS cabaret. Don't worry about it. And pray tell just sees right through that. He's just like, look, don't baby me in this situation. Don't treat me like a ch child. Don't, don't, don't tell me all the crap to just let me know that everything's gonna be okay. Just let me be pissed off. Let me be angry that I'm in this situation because I'm taking that medicine and I'm sick and I don't have time to be sick. My days, days are numbered and I'm sick because of that medicine. And immediately you see that Blanca feels some sort of guilt for uh, convincing him to take the medicine. And he says, look, just let me be mad. Just get out. Just, I'm pissed off. I'm mad. So they leave. The next scene takes us to Blanca's nail salon and she's setting up and she's starting to have a good day and guess who walks into the door? <laughs> Miss, Miss Federica Norman, okay? The, the realtor mogul. She walks in and she tells Blanca, oh hi, I love your store. It's coming along, it looks great. I just need to make sure you're keeping the salon clean because I don't want anybody to, you know, get you know, anything you have. And Blanca tells her, hey, do you want to look at all the sterilization machines, you know, that I have in the back? Look, it's all good. She goes, no, I trust you. It's okay. I don't need to see that. So she says, hey, you know what? I've pretty much been, you know, pretty mean to you. And I just want to show my support. I hear that you're having a nice little cabaret and I would love to show my support. And she kind of hands her a $20 bill like, oh, there you go. Knowing that, girl, you got stacks on stacks on stacks, and you're just going to give her a $20 bill. And, you know, Blanca, she just took it. She's like, whatever. She's like, look, you know, I had some friends and family that suffered from that disease and passed away from that disease. I would love to show my support. And even at one time, I was an actress, and, and I loved to sing. But then I had the realization that, you know what, I want to be a boss, okay? And all that other stuff was beneath me, so I guess I can show up to your event. And she snatches the $20 bill away. Which is just complete crud because Blanca's looking at her like, girl, you are so, so full of it. We move on to the next scene where Pray Tell is in the hospital and he's being moved to another room where he meets Lewis. Lewis Carter. So Lewis is in there, he's coughing, he's reaching for, you know, his air mask, and he's just he's just not in he's not in good shape. And Pray Tell is like, hey, you know, are you alright? And he says, you know, I have pneumonia. 
<laughs> and as a response, Frey tells like, well, are your platelets low? Kind of giving him that nudge, like, boo, I know you don't have pneumonia, like, like stop it. So pray tell, you know, he tells him like, hey, you know, you look familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? Do I know you from the ballroom? Do I know you from here? Do I know you from there? And he tells him, look, I am an educated college student. I am, I, I look, I am not what you think I am, okay? I am a, a black man who went to school and graduated. I am now a queen. I think when they inserted that, pray tell had that moment where he kind of gave him that look like, oh, okay. I, I see where you come from. They wanted to show that some people choose to not be as vibrant and out. They want to keep their lifestyles kind of to themselves and that all people aren't living out loud of who they are and how they identify themselves. And he was just letting him know like, hey, I'm just not, I'm just not that type of guy. Look, I, you, you may know what's going on, but I'm not letting everybody know what's going on. So people, people are choosing to live out loud, loud privately. <laughs> Little holiday heart reference. Later on that night, Pray Tell is awakened by the gentleman having a seizure. And he's coughing and he's shaking and pray tell is having a panic attack and he's telling the nurses, hey, like it's the medicine, it's the medicine. And he's freaking out and they're like, sir, we gotta, we gotta work on him. You're in the way. He's panicking. Oh, you know, it's the medicine. Oh my God, I can't believe it. He's dying. And that nurse gave him a sedative in his arm and it took him out. I guess they say, hey, we cannot work in these conditions. We need to, <laughs> we need to put him out. Pray tell is pretty much comatose and goes into what we think is a hallucination or a dream. And he awakens by a room full of flowers with cards. And he's thinking, oh, my friends and brought me these flowers. How wonderful. And he pulls out the card to read it. And immediately he reads it and you hear the, the narration voiceover. Die, bitch. <laughs> Join me in hell, okay? It's Candy. Now, Candy is the character that passed away a couple of episodes back. And they really didn't get along. You know, they were oil and water, honey. So he just reads another card and another card and come with me. Your time is coming. Time is ticking. Tick, tick, tick. And he's just like, oh, my goodness. And he, you think, oh, he's still battling with some demons. Candy is on him. And she is on another level with it. She is dressed down. She's telling him, hey. I'm fine where I am. I'm comfortable. I'm in an area where I feel comfortable, where people know me. People people are, are comfortable with me, and I'm around people that I know. And Pray Tell says, well, you know, well, what does that mean? You're, you're around people that know you. So then she dumps a handful of pills into his hand, and she says, look, you could be with Perry Ellis and Steve Rubell. And, you know, you know who Perry Ellis is? Steve Rubell, he was the owner of Studio 54. Studio 54 was hit. You know, Ray Tell is just like, oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, wait a minute. Hey, I don't want to kill myself. Stop. <laughs> he immediately tells her, look, I, that's not what I want. I don't want to go there. I don't want to kill myself. Leave me alone. Stop haunting me. That's not what I want. So that vision goes away. The next time he comes to within the dream, he's awakened by a gentleman at the end of his bed, humming a, so a song, humming a tune. We don't know who this person is. And Pray Tell says, could you stop? Could you stop humming that song? I don't like that. And the gentleman says, well, why, son? That's something that always used to relax you. He said, well, first of all, I'm not your son. Let's just get that straight. I am not your son, and you used to sing this song to relax me, and after you would relax me, you would do what you did. And I thought, uh-oh. Oh. I already know where we're going. So then he tells me, hey, the, the, the gentleman says, hey, you seduced me. And Pray Tell said, I was 12 years old when you married my mother after my dad died. So you immediately know this is not his biological dad. This is his stepdad. And he's expressing that, hey, you came on to me as a grown man and I was a 12 year old boy. So you molested me and you think, oh, this is something that Pray Tell has been holding on to and that we're learning more about him. And we think, oh, poor Pray Tell. Oh, this is just so sad. And he says, you know what? I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you because he wants this spirit or this demon or something that's been haunting him to go away. After that, he hears, Pray Tell, it's okay. Shh. And then he is greeted 
with his boyfriend's spirit that passed away and he's like look you got to stop this you got to get up you have got to go to this AIDS cabaret it's your time and he guides into the the hall and he says hey I'll be there with you it's all right and we see him envision himself pray tell in a nice suit and he begins to sing a song and for those of you who don't know oh that don't know okay Billy Porter is is this is, this is nothing new to him, okay? This is not his first rodeo. He is a Tony Award-winning thespian, okay? So I love to see these moments to where he has uh, his own scenes to sing and to show these dramatic monologues because he is absolutely amazing. I see why he was uh, nominated for the Emmy. I hope he gets it. So when he comes to... We then later see another scene where Blanca and a lot of people that are from the ballroom scene and his friends come to the hospital for this event and they're singing songs and they're having a good time and then they go into this song where they start to sing a song. I am a huge Stevie Wonder fan and the direction of these episodes, they do a wonderful job of inserting songs that so match the scene and cause this nostalgia and you just get chills from it and it's just the timing is absolutely perfect. And then all of a sudden you hear that intro. Come on. today come on y'all mm, mm. don't delay send yours in right away look don't get me started on some stevie look stevie wonder prince michael jackson they were able to touch with their music don't get me started on stevie Wonder. look now then we have Miss Norman, okay? She comes in there gowned down in sequence and she says, you know what? I'm really supporting this benefit. I'm really happy for you guys. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna give. And she pulls out, once again, going into her bra, a $100 bill and gives it to Blanca, making her contribution. And she says, you know what, this is this is what I do. I'm a humanitarian, you know, I'm a philanthropist. This is something that I'm contributing and I'm realizing that this is something I need to do more often. I'm not gonna do much. I thought it was really cute how in between songs, you had House Evangelista and House of Wintour going back and forth like some kids. Evangelista, House of Wintour. I mean, it was like, high school you know track team football cheerleading you know everybody settle down now come on y'all nurse judy was like y'all cut that out we gotta we gotta keep the show going i thought that was really cute we had miss norman you know she come up there and she gowned down okay she came up there ready to sing and she says you know what this is something that I just really want to take the time to contribute. She once again goes into her brazier and pulls out a $100 bill and gives it to Blanca. Like, girl, this is nothing to me. This is like five cents. And Blanca, you know, she takes it. And you really are just seeing this softer side of her. Like, wow, she's just really helping and contributing to this event. And she's just connecting. And she can sing. She goes, and she says, you know, a matter of fact, give me, I'm still here in E flat. Hit it. Boop. And she starts to sing and everybody's feeling it and everybody's clapping like, okay, you can hold a note. And she gives a wonderful performance. Then after that, honey, we have Miss Electra get up there who's tone deaf and gets up there. But let me tell you, House of Wintour got up and clapped and bravo and yes, 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 mother. And they served it, but everybody was like, girl, Electra, sit, sit down, girl, sit down. After everybody sings and has a good time, you know, Miss Norman, she comes to Blanca and says, you know what, this was great. I had a wonderful time. I don't wanna miss a thing. This needs to keep going, but I need to step into the hallway and I need to make a call. Just keep it going. So she goes into the hallway 
to make a call to, of course, one of her little, I guess, realtor goons. And they are closing down Blanca shop. They have boarded it up. They have put chains on it, a lock. They have shut it down, okay? That whole entire time, we thought that she was connecting with everybody. It was all a ploy to gain more time to shut her down and distract everybody from what was going on. And she went to the extreme. She said, you know, by any means necessary, and she shut it down, and she played that role. That's what you call just a perfectionist when, to, when it comes to that almighty dollar. She could care less about how you feel or what you're going through. Blanca finds out that her shop is shut down, and then later on in the episode, they are sitting down at dinner, House of Evangelista, including Pray Tell, and they tell him, hey, we're gonna make sure you get better. And Blanca tells him, look, I suggested you take that medicine because I was concerned. I, I, was, I was just trying to show support and I didn't want you to get sicker. Forgive me, we want you to be happy. And her kids are like, you know, mom, that's great, but she shut down uh, your salon. I mean, what are you gonna do about that? And she was really relaxed and saying, you know what, I took a few classes. I'm gonna take that to court. I know that that's against the law. We're gonna protest and I'm gonna get my salon back. So later on, you see them protesting and it's only a few people. And then of course, Pray Tell comes through and brings other house members and friends. And then it's like 50 of them and they're protesting and they're protesting and bringing more and more attention to that corner where the salon was shut down. And people are like, man, what's going on with that? They got signs that say she's a crook and they got her you know, animated with the little bars. And they're like, hey, we're gonna let everybody know what a crook you are and that you are tricking people out of they, they, they real estate. And hey, we, we just bringing the awareness to it and then as they're protesting you know of course miss norman she is in that limo that window goes down she sees them out there protesting and she's like oh, like dang like okay i'm worried about that i'm worried about that i really really am so the final scene we see pray tell he's getting ready for bed he's getting comfortable he's just about to get into bed and go to sleep and he sees candy again so candy is telling him look I'm gonna keep haunting you, boo-boo, until you give in and you join me and you just end it all and just kill yourself. I'm just gonna keep haunting you. I really, really am, and I'm not gonna stop. And pray tell is sure and vibrant to let her know I'm gonna keep fighting. I'm not giving up. You can stop haunting me. You're gonna keep haunting me, that's fine, but just know I have a lot to live for. So that is the end of the episode. Some side notes, I see a lot of foreshadowing. So Angel, in a particular scene, she sits next to Blanca because Blanca's frustrated, trying to prepare when she was preparing for the AIDS benefit. And Angel said, you know what? I see that you're having a lot of trouble working at the salon, trying to do this event, and you're a mother. You know, let me help. With that little tidbit, that gives me an idea that they are slowly preparing us for Blanca's passing. I actually think that Blanca will pass away towards the end of the season and Angel will step in as that mother role because Angel continues to show that she cares, that she's supportive, that she doesn't mind taking our responsibility. So that's what I think they're doing with that. Now with the Candy character, I'm really disappointed that they killed off her character and she's just reoccurring as some type of ghost or, or reminiscence or demon uh, shall you say to certain characters I really think they should have kept that character alive because it was such a challenging and fighting and powerful character I really just didn't see the point in killing her off and having you know it just seems kind of pointless to me but I really think that's where they're going with polls I really can't wait to review the next episode make sure you tune in thank you for viewing this one make sure to subscribe Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E.